Mark, welcome to Down the Stretch. Thanks for having me. Why a film on Secretariat now, some 37 years after his historic run? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy she waited this long to let someone tell her story uh, and that it w ended up being us. Uh, yeah, a lot of people tried over the years, and it just, uh, I guess for her, felt like it was the right time. You know, hopefully it was, uh, you know, us and, and, and the movies that we've done and the studio that was doing it. Um, and I think she just felt comfortable and felt like it was time to, to do a movie. And obviously the she you're referring to is Penny Chenery, of course, Mark, is this movie, and obviously they're intertwined, but is this movie more about Secretariat or the story of Penny Chenery? Well, you know, clearly it's about both, but really it's Penny's story. Um, you know, if you look at any, you know, compelling, certainly sports drama that we've done in the past, it's usually an underdog story at the heart of it. And, and looking at, you know, uh, how to get inside this movie, really, when we found out what her journey was, that's what we felt like it was the key that unlocked the story for us. You've done other sports movies. I'm a big baseball fan. You did The Rookie, which I thought was absolutely terrific. What were some of your biggest challenges in doing a horse racing theme movie? Well, you know, for one, we didn't have the budget that a movie like Seabiscuit had, so we, we were lean and mean and, and really had to... Um, be smart about how we spent our money and and how we approached our horse racing and the, and the drama and I think it all added to uh, a better movie. Quite frankly, um, you know, we we shot this in 45 days with horse racing and you know typically a movie will you know average about 60 or more days of shooting and you know we just uh, we just had to hit everything perfectly and we had a terrific cinematographer and Dean Semler and uh, there was no fat in this movie so we uh, we just uh, you know everyone really pulled together and did an amazing job. Your director, Randall Wallace, said that he wanted the moviegoers to experience the races as participants and not observers. Were you guys able to pull that off? I think we did. Um, in fact, everyone that has seen the movie has commented that it's some of the, the greatest racing action they've ever seen on a, on a horse racing film. You know, we used, uh, Randy from the beginning wanted to get inside the action and really kind of get that visceral uh, impact for the audience. And, you know, we were able to devise cameras that really allowed us to get very, very close to the horses and, uh, and, and feel and get behind, feel the dirt coming at you. And uh, the sound design uh, is amazing. I guess it would, it would be as if you're next to a bunch of horses, you know, coming down the stretch. So uh, I think we really succeeded in that. You described Secretariat, as well as some of the other, your other sports movies, The Rookie and Miracle, as, and I'm quoting here, chick flicks for guys, end quote. I need a little explanation on that. <laughs> well, this one's a little different, uh, different because I think, you know, really women, because it's, uh, you know, Diane Lane and Penny, and it's a female protagonist that, uh, but the other movies, obviously, you know, or emotional journeys with sports in them and for guys you know that end up you know getting you know hopefully a tear at the end you know they can look at each other and we we coin this chick flicks for guys that uh... you know men really respond almost like a romantic comedy uh... in our other films but uh... you know this one being a little different because i think women will uh... be driving as much as men this audience let's talk about the human stars of the film for a moment uh, mark uh, beginning with the uh, lovely and very talented Diane Lane as Penny Chenery. How key was Diane's performance here? Yeah, she, she, it, it was amazing. I mean, we all, uh, from, the, from the beginning, really uh, had kind of an eye on, on Diane for this role, and when she responded to it, um, you know, we just felt so lucky. She embodied everything about Penny, and, you know, I, Randy and, and myself and Diane traveled to the Belmont last year, and it was her first Triple Crown race, and, and she was just soaking everything up. And you could see that she, she was uh, really uh, involved in, in this story and really kind of accepting the challenge and, and fell in love and really felt that she was, you know, playing someone of royalty and uh, really had done her homework on Penny and, and felt honored, and she's used that word a lot, to, to play uh, and for, to portray Penny Chenery. I had the uh, pleasure of interviewing Lucian Lauren on any number of occasions, so when I heard that John Malkovic was chosen to play Lucian Lauren, 
I guess that probably wasn't the, fir the first person that crossed my mind. How did that turn out? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, Lucian was a, a former jockey, and, and, and John certainly doesn't resemble a jockey. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, from the beginning, you know, we took a little bit of license with the physicality of, of, of this character. But uh, uh, in, in the film, there's so much humor and uniqueness that John brings to this role. Uh, you know, uh, we've heard already Oscar talk. Uh, in a supporting role for his performance in this, and you know he he brings so much uh, levity and you know emotion. It's a role you haven't seen John uh, play before, and uh, I think he just did a great job. Mark Secretariat was so very special to most every uh, racing fan. Certain events are still etched very clearly in our minds nearly forty years later. How important was it to you to be extremely accurate or as accurate as possible in portraying some of those events? Yeah, I mean, what, what's great about this story is so much of it, you know, lays out structurally really well. Uh, you know, there's, also, there's always some license that you would take a, a lot of times, you know, collapsing time and, and combining characters. Uh, but the great thing about this, this movie was so... So much of it laid out, you know, uh, uh, emotionally and uh, structurally that served our story. Uh, you know, the great thing was that she uh, took over the farm. Everyone knows that, and I think that's the story that's going to be interesting to tell, that she kind of jumped into a man's world. She was a, a housewife living in Denver at the time, and here she is, um, you know, running a farm. And, you know, you cut to years later when she's uh, she gets this horse secretariat and a coin flip, and... Uh, and her journey, but but really with the with the pressure she was under with her family members and 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 then a tax burden when her dad passed away, she had to syndicate this horse. She wanted to keep it and run it, and it was the only way to save the farm and save everything. So she gambled, and really this horse had to win the triple crown for this 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 huge number, the syndication uh, to pay off. Because uh, if it hadn't, uh, it would have been non-performance, and and you know literally she could have lost the farm. So a great deal of pressure was put on this uh, this event and uh, you know she came through on a personal note how did a former pitcher for the Milwaukee Brewers become a producer in Hollywood good question <laughs> <laughs> well when I retired you know and uh, a good friend of mine and, and, and now partner Gordon Gray we'd always talked about you know doing some kind of business together and, and then living in LA you know we over the years had a lot of friends uh, that were in the film business and, and we were always the guys kind of on the outside looking in and, and, and watching our friends have success and, and rise up the ladder. And finally, we looked at each other and said, why don't we try it? So, I mean, we, no one helped us. We worked out of a garage and, and truly taught ourselves. And I was 34 at the time, and, and my partner was just turning 30, and he just kind of had this, you know, I got I to gotta try this and, and dragged me along with him. And, yeah, we just dove in and, uh, and got two movies greenlit out of our garage and, then parlayed that into a, an overall production deal, which we've had uh, one for 11 years now. So we've been quite fortunate and probably were too dumb to know at the time how difficult it was. <laughs> the Brewers could use you back, of course. Mark? Uh, yeah, unless they saw my ERA. So I got a cup of coffee up there, but it was great. I played five years professionally, and it was uh, something that uh, I'll never forget and uh, I think brought a lot you know, to my ability in, in filmmaking and certainly doing, you know, sports themes uh sport themed movies and finally mark are you pleased with the film you made very yeah you know you, you when you make a movie you you never know how the audience is going to respond you just got to make the best uh, attempt at at a movie that you would enjoy and you feel audiences would enjoy so until you put it in front of an audience you have no idea but the first test screening we knew i mean the crowd was going absolutely crazy and then we said you know maybe that's an anomaly so we we tested in the same theater about three weeks later with a few changes, and it played even better. So um, we, we knew how audiences responded, and that, that's the best indication. So um, we feel fortunate that, uh, that we accomplished our goal. Well, Mark, congratulations on the movie. Best of luck with the movie, and thank you so very much for having joined us this morning on Down the Stretch. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Take Mark care. Ciardi, ladies and gentlemen, the producer of Disney's Secretary.